Hello everyone and welcome to Sally and Bytes. Today, I am here to teach Chapter 5, Conditional and Looping Constructs Part 3, for the Class 11 Students of Computer Science. In this video, we are going to discuss about the infinite loop, nested loops, jump statements, break statement, continue statement, pass statement and practical implementation. So let's dive in and get started. Now we will discuss about the using of else statement with for and while loops. You should know that Python supports an else statement to be associated with a loop statement. For loop. If the else statement is used with a for loop, the else statement is executed where the loop has exhausted iterating the list. Next is while loop. If the else statement is used with a while loop, the else statement is executed when the condition becomes false. Let's discuss about the infinite loop. An infinite loop in Python is a loop that continues to execute indefinitely because its condition never becomes false or because there is no condition at all. This can cause your program to crash or become unresponsive, so it's important to avoid creating infinite loops. Let's see an example. The statement, while true colon, print, this loop will never end. This loop will continue to print this loop will never end, forever because the condition true is always true. You can look at the Python code on the right side, where the print statement continues to print, this loop will never end, forever. The infinite loop can be terminated manually by pressing Ctrl plus C from the keyboard to provide an external interruption for the program, a direct way to terminate the whole loop which would go on forever. Now, look at the Python code. The remaining output lines after Ctrl plus C have been eliminated by a returning command as keyboard interrupt. How can we stop the infinite loop with the Python code? To stop the infinite loop, you can use the break statement. While true colon, print, this loop will never end of break. Now, look at the Python code. In this modified version of the loop, the break statement is executed after the first iteration, which terminates the loop and prevents it from executing indefinitely. Now, look at another example of an infinite loop. This infinite loop is using a while loop with a condition that never becomes false. i equals 0, while i less than 5, print i. In this example, i is initialized to 0 and the loop condition is i less than 5. However, the value of i never changes within the loop, so the condition is always true and the loop will execute indefinitely. To fix this, you can modify the loop to change the value of i. Now the Python code is modified as i equals 0, while i less than 5, print i, i plus equals 1. In this modified version of the loop, i is incremented by 1 in each iteration eventually causing the condition i less than 5 to become false and the loop to terminate. We are going to discuss about the nested loops. Now look at the syntax for a nested for loop. Nested loops in Python refer to a situation where one loop is present inside another loop. So, the inner loop is present inside the outer loop. The inner loop is executed a fixed number of times for every single iteration of the outer loop. Look at the indentation of the outer loop. Nested loops are used when you need to perform a task repeatedly, and that task requires you to perform another task multiple times. In a nested for loop, we can place for loop inside another for loop. Consider an example. For i in range of 3. For j in range of 4. Print i and j. This Python code demonstrates the use of nested loops and the print function. Let's break it down step by step. Now look at step 1 below. Step 1. We have to find the range of 3. Range of start stop step. Start value equals default value 0. Stop value equals 3, 3 is not included. Step value equals default value 1. So, range of 3 equals 0. 
1, 2. Now look at step 2. Step 2. We have to find the range of 4. Range of, start, stop, step. Start value equals default value 0. Stop value equals 4, 4 is not included. Step value equals default value 1. So, range of, 4, equals, 0. 1, 2, 3. Now look at the Python code. The outer loop for i in range of, 3i teratez over the values from 0, 1, 2. This means that the loop body will execute 3 times, with i taking the values 0, 1, and 2. The inner loop for j in range of, for i teratez over the values from 0, 1, 2, 3. For each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop will execute four times, with j taking the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, look at the right side. Let's see how it works. When outer loop i equals 0, the inner loop executes j equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Next, when outer loop i equals 1, the inner loop executes j equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Next, when outer loop i equals 2, the inner loop executes j equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Now see how print statement works. Now, look at the Python print statement. The print function is called within the nested loops. It displays a formatted string that contains the current values of i and j. The f before the string indicates an f string, which allows you to embed expressions inside curly braces to be evaluated and formatted within the string. Now, look at the output, how it's displayed and also check how the print statement can be written. Let's see another example. Write a Python code to create a number pattern using nested for loops. I have written the Python code on the left side in blue color with line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. You have to follow with those lines along with me with the working part. Come on, let's see how it works. In line 1, for i in range of, 1 comma 4 is the outer loop. Here range of, 1 comma 4, equals 1, 2, 3. Now let's look at the first iteration. In line 1, the outer loop i equals 1. In line 2, the inner loop j equals range of, 1 comma i plus 1, equals range of, 1 comma 1 plus 1, equals range of, 1 comma 2. So the range of 1 comma 2 is 1. Here start value is 1 and stop value 2 is not included. In line 3, it prints the value of j equals 1, followed by a space. In line 4, then a new line is printed. After the inner loop completes, the print statement without any arguments is executed, which prints a new line character. This moves the cursor to the next line. So the output will be 1. Now look at the second iteration. In line 1, the outer loop i equals 2. In line 2, the inner loop j equals range of 1 comma i plus 1 equals range of 1 comma 2 plus 1 equals range of 1 comma 3 equals 1 comma 2. In line 3, it prints the value of j equals 1 2, followed by a space. In line 4, then a new line is printed. So the output her will be 1 on first line, then 1 2 on the second line. Now let's see the third iteration. In the third iteration, in line 1, the outer loop i equals 3. In line 2, the inner loop j equals range of 1 comma i plus 1 equals range of 1 comma 3 plus 1 equals range of 1 comma 4 equals 1 comma 2 comma 3. In line 3, it prints the value of j equals 1 2 3, followed by a space. In line 4, then a new line is printed. The final output would be 1 on first line, 1 2 on second line and 1 2 3 on third line. Now, pause the video and work out on your own. This is the Python code to create a number pattern using nested for loops, which we worked out just now. Check the output displayed. Now we will discuss about the nested while loop. 
In a nested while loop, a while loop is defined inside another while loop. Now look at the syntax. The outer while loop starts with a condition expression. This expression is evaluated before entering the loop. If the expression evaluates to true, the loop is executed. If the expression is false, the loop is skipped, and the program continues to the next statement after the loop. Inside the outer while loop, there is an inner while loop. This inner loop also has a condition expression that is evaluated before each iteration. If the expression evaluates to true, the inner loop statements are executed. If the expression is false, the inner loop is skipped, and the program continues to the statements after the inner loop. Within the inner loop, there is a block of statements that is executed as long as the inner loop's condition expression remains true. After the inner loop finishes executing that is, the condition expression becomes false, the program proceeds to the statements following the inner loop. Finally, the program executes statement 2 after both loops have completed their iterations. The nature of statement 2 depends on the context of your code. Let's see an example for nested while loop. Now look at the Python code. The variable i is initialized with a value of 0. The outer while loop while i less than 3 is executed as long as the condition i less than 3 is true. This means the loop will run 3 times since i starts at 0 in increments by 1 in each iteration. Inside the outer loop, the variable j is initialized with a value of 0. The inner while loop while j less than 4 is executed as long as the condition j less than 4 is true. This means the inner loop will run 4 times since j starts at 0 in increments by 1 in each iteration. Inside the inner loop, the print statement is executed. It uses f-string formatting to print the values of i and j. The output will be in the format i colon the value of i j colon the value of j where i and j are replaced with the current values of i and j respectively. After printing the current values of i and j, the inner loop continues until j becomes greater than or equal to 4, at which point the inner loop is exited. The variable j is incremented by 1 using the statement j plus equals 1. The inner loop starts again, and the process repeats until j becomes greater than or equal to 4, at which point the inner loop is exited. After the inner loop finishes, the outer loop proceeds to the next iteration. The variable i is incremented by 1 using the statement i plus equals 1. The outer loop continues to run until i becomes greater than or equal to 3, at which point the loop is exited. Finally, after both loops have completed, the program continues to the statements following the loops. Overall, this code generates the following output as shown on the console. Let's recall the key points of the nested loops. Nested loop is one loop inside another loop. Once the condition of outer loop is true, the control is transferred to the inner loop. First the inner loop is terminated and then the outer loop terminates. The inner loop must have a different name for its loop counter variable so that it will not conflict with the outer loop. Now, let's discuss about the jump statements. In Python, a jump statement is a keyword that allows you to control the flow of your program's execution by jumping to a specific line of code or section of your program. As the name suggests, a jump statement is used to break the normal flow of the program and jump onto a specific line of code in the program if the specific condition is true. In simple words, it transfers the execution control of the program to another statement if a specific condition associated becomes true. There are three types of jump statements in Python. Break statement, continue statement, and pass statement. Let's discuss about the break statement. The break statement is used to terminate a loop, for loop, while loop, prematurely, that means the loop is terminated or exited before it naturally reaches its end. When a break statement is encountered inside a loop, the loop is immediately terminated, and the program control moves to the next statement after the loop. 
As the name suggests, a brake statement is used to brake or stop a flow control. This is generally used in a loop. A brake statement is used in a loop in such a way that when a particular condition becomes true, the brake statement is executed and we come out of the loop immediately at that moment. Let's see the syntax. Syntax is brake. Now let's learn about the brake statement in for loop. The for loop iterates over the sequence, executing the code inside the loop body for each element. The break statement provides a way to prematurely exit the loop if a certain condition is met. Let's see an example. For i in range of 1,6 if i equal to 4, break. Print i. Let's see how it works. Range of 1,6 gives the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the first iteration, variable i is assigned the value 1. The if statement is evaluated, but since the condition i equal to 4 is false, the break statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 1. In the second iteration, variable i is assigned the value 2. The if statement is evaluated, but since the condition i equal to 4 is false, the break statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 2. In the third iteration, variable i is assigned the value 3. The if statement is evaluated, but since the condition i equal to 4 is false, the break statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 3. In the fourth iteration, variable i is assigned the value 4. The if statement is evaluated, but since the condition i equal to 4 is true, the break statement is executed. And the loop is terminated. So, the output of the code will be 1, 2, 3. Let's see another example of break statement inside for loop. Now look at the Python code. The loop iterates over each character in the string computer, and in each iteration, the current character is assigned to the variable val. The if val equal to character p, condition checks if the current character, val, is equal to p. If the condition is satisfied, that is, the val is equal to p, the break statement is executed. This immediately terminates the loop, and the program continues with the code after the loop. If the condition is not satisfied, that is, val is not equal to p, the print val statement is executed, which prints the current character val. Once the loop completes or is terminated by the break statement, the code continues executing. In this case, the line print over is executed, which simply prints the string over. Now, let's go through the loop step by step. The first character is C. Since it is not equal to P, it is printed. The second character is O. It is also printed. The third character is M. It is printed as well. The fourth character is P. The condition val equal to P is satisfied, so the break statement is executed, and the loop is terminated. After terminating the loop, over, is printed. So, the output of the code will be, com over. Let's discuss about the break in while loop. Now look at the syntax. While loop continues executing its codes as long as the test expression remains true, but it can be prematurely terminated using the break statement when a specific condition is met. Let's see an example. Here's an example that demonstrates the use of the break statement in a while loop. Now look at the Python code and how it works. First iteration. Initially, count is 0, and the while loop is entered. While count less than 5, count is equal to 0. So, 0 less than 5 it is true, so it goes to the next line. Next line prints count is 0. In the next line, count is increment by 1. So count equals 0 plus 1, that is count equals 1. The next line checks the condition if count equal to 3. So count is now 1. So check if 1 is equal to 3. It's false. 
so the next line break is not executed and the while loop continues. Now second iteration starts. While count less than 5, count is equal to 1. So, is 1 less than 5 it is true, so it goes to the next line. Next line prints count as 1. In the next line, count is increment by 1. So count equals 1 plus 1, that is count equals 2. The next line checks the condition if count equal to 3. So count is now 2. So check if 2 is equal to 3. It's false. So the next line break is not executed and the while loop continues. Now third iteration starts. While count less than 5, count is equal to 2. So, is 2 less than 5 it is true, so it goes to the next line. Next line prints count as 2. In the next line, count is increment by 1. So count equals 2 plus 1, that is count equals 3. The next line checks the condition if count equal to 3. So count is now 3. So check if 3 is equal to 3. It's true. Now the next line break is executed, terminating the loop. Then finally, the line print, loop is complete, is then executed, which prints the message loop is complete. The output of the code will be, count, 0, count, 1, count, 2, loop is complete. Here in this Python code, you have to note that the loop runs three times, when count is 0, 1, and 2, before being terminated by the break statement. Now let's discuss about the continue statement in Python. The continue statement is used to skip the current iteration of a loop and move to the next iteration. When a continue statement is encountered inside a loop, the current iteration is skipped, and the loop immediately jumps to the next iteration. Syntax is continue. Now, we will discuss about the continue statement in for loop. Look at the syntax. A sequence is iterated over, and certain actions are taken based on a condition using the if statement. The continue statement is used to skip the remaining code in the current iteration if the condition is met. Let's see an example and how it works. Range of 1, 6 generates values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the first iteration, variable i is assigned the value 1. The if statement is evaluated, but since the condition i equal to 3 is false, the continue statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 1. In the second iteration, variable i is assigned the value 2. The if statement is evaluated, and again, the condition i equal to 3 is false, so the continue statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 2. In the third iteration, variable i is assigned the value 3. The if statement is evaluated, and this time, the condition i equal to 3 is true. The continue statement is encountered, causing the current iteration to end immediately. The print i statement is skipped. The loop proceeds to the next iteration. In the fourth iteration, variable i is assigned the value 4. The if statement is evaluated, and as before, the condition i equal to 3 is false, so the continue statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 4. In the fifth iteration, variable i is assigned the value 5. The if statement is evaluated, and once again, the condition i equal to 3 is false, so the continue statement is not executed. The print i statement is executed, resulting in the output 5. After the loop finishes iterating over all the values in the range, there are no more iterations to process. Therefore, the loop terminates. So the output displayed are 1, 2, 4, 5. Now let's discuss about the continue statement in while loop in Python. Now, look at the syntax. The while loop repeatedly executes the code inside it as long as the test underscore expression is true. The if statement with the continue statement provides a way to skip the remaining code inside the loop based on a certain condition.
let's see an example and how it works. First iteration. The count variable is initialized to zero. The while loop is entered, and the test underscore expression, count less than five, is evaluated. Since the initial value of count is zero, the condition is true, and the loop begins. Inside the loop, count is increment by one, count plus equals one. Count equals zero plus one, that is one. The if statement checks if count is equal to three. Count equals one. One equal to three is false. So the print statement is executed, displaying the current value of count equal to 1. Second iteration. While count less than 5, count equals 1. So 1 less than 5 is true. It goes to the next line to increment count by 1. So count becomes 2. The if statement checks if count is equal to 3. Count equals 2. Now, 2 equal to 3 is false. So the print statement is executed, displaying the current value of count equal to 2. Third iteration. While count less than 5. Count equals 2. So 2 less than 5 is true. It goes to the next line to increment count by 1. So count becomes 3. The if statement checks if count is equal to 3. Count equals 3. Now, 3 equal to 3 is true. The continue statement is executed, which jumps back to the start of the while loop without executing the subsequent code. In this case, when count is 3, the print statement is skipped. Fourth iteration. While count less than 5. Count equals 3. So 3 less than 5 is true. It goes to the next line to increment count by 1. So count becomes 4. The if statement checks if count is equal to 4. Count equals 4. Now, 4 equal to 3 is false. So the print statement is executed, displaying the current value of count equal to 4. Fifth iteration. While count less than 5. Count equals 4. So 4 less than 5 is true. It goes to the next line to increment count by 1. So count becomes 5. The if statement checks if count is equal to 5. Count equals 5. Now, 5 equal to 3 is false. So the print statement is executed, displaying the current value of count equal to 5. Now the test expression in the while loop count less than 5 becomes false and hence the loop is exited. After the loop, the code outside the loop is executed, and loop finished is printed. When you run this code, the output will be current count, 1, current count, 2, current count, 4, current count, 5, loop finished. As you can see, when count is equal to 3, the continue statement is triggered, and the code inside the if block is skipped for that iteration. In Python, the pass statement is a null statement, which means it does nothing when executed. It is used as a placeholder or a do-nothing statement in situations where a statement is required syntactically, but no action is needed or desired. The syntax is pass. Let's see an example. In a for loop, you might use pass to indicate that there is no code to be executed in the loop body, for i in range of 10. Pass. This code creates a loop that iterates 10 times, from 0 to 9. Each iteration assigns the current value to the variable i. However, the loop does nothing else because the pass statement is used as a placeholder for future code. The pass statement means do nothing and it is useful when you want to create a loop or a function but you don't have any code to execute yet. No output gets displayed. Now let's look at another example. Character filtering. In this example, we have taken a string banana and a pass statement every time a is encountered. Therefore, in output the a is omitted. Now look at the Python code for each line by line explanation. The code starts with a for loop that iterates over each character in the string banana. 
In each iteration, the current character is assigned to the variable i. Inside the for loop, there is an if statement that checks if the current character i is equal to a. If the condition i is equal to a is true, the pass statement is executed. Pass is a placeholder statement that does nothing and allows the code to continue to the next iteration without taking any action. If the condition i equal to a is false, which means the current character is not equal to a, the code executes the indented block of code below the else statement. In this case, the indented block of code simply contains a print statement that outputs the current character i. The loop continues to the next iteration until all characters in the string have been processed. So the output will be BNN. Let's recall the key points of jump statement. Break statement. The break statement terminates the loop containing it. If break statement is inside a nested loop, loop inside another loop, break will terminate the innermost loop. Continue statement. The continue statement is used to skip the rest of the code inside a loop for current iteration only. Loop does not terminate but continues on with the next iteration. Pass statement. We use the pass statement to construct a body that does nothing. Thanks for watching. Watch the upcoming videos. Chapter 6 Strings Part 1 Strings, creating strings, indexing in a string, traversing a string, string operators, and practical implementation. You can check the link in the description box below.